Hey folks, Smoking Hads here. Um, I think an explanation just quickly before we get into the video is appropriate here. It's been over five years since I uploaded anything to this channel. Um, the TLDR is life. Um, I used to do YouTube as a hobby, um, just playing lo random games, Hearthstone, FIFA, lots of different stuff. Um, but, you know. Life happened and I wasn't able to do it anymore, but since Diablo um, has been releasing, I've been so looking forward to Diablo 4 coming out, like you wouldn't believe, um, and I made a commitment to myself that I was going to get back into YouTube and also streaming on Twitch when Diablo 4 came out, and that's exactly what I've done. Um, it's a little bit about me, I am from Scotland, I'm Scottish. I'm doing my best to articulate my accent. Um, it's a little bit heavier on the stream because I'm a little bit more relaxed. Uh, but that's about it. Bear with me. It's been a long time since I made a video. Um, I'm doing this off the cuff. I'm not scripted. I want my videos to be quite natural um, and I want to do explanations and stuff while I watch along with you guys, essentially. So yeah, with all of that out of the way um, and just a quick... Just one more quick is that moving forward, my commitment to myself is that I'm going to post at least one long video per week, um, which I'm doing right now, and potentially maybe some smaller snippet videos in between if I get the time. I do work full time between streaming and YouTube, so it is difficult to find the time, um, but I'm like I said, made a commitment to myself. Um, it has been five years since I did this, so do bear with me. But with all of that out of the way, let's just get right into the video and let me show you what I've got for you today. So, what we'll do here is we'll do a quick skill breakdown first um, to show you the skill layout of the build. Um, and then I'll do a quick aspect overview to show you the aspects that I'm pairing with the build. And then also, Bear with me, I'll give you an explanation as to why, although I'm only level 64, why I believe that when I do hit level 70 with this build, it's going to get even crazier and better than it is now, and I've just completed the Capstone Dungeon World Tier 4 in the state it is now, and it can only get stronger. I don't have full upgrades on my gear, and I'm missing a key aspect of the build, yet it still cleared the Capstone Dungeon World Tier 4 with relative ease and no deaths whatsoever. Um, didn't die once and we killed the boss fairly fast, um, which I will show you. So let's just get right into the skill breakdown first. So f initially, what you want to pick is Reap and the second skill for Reap and that's it. Don't take the third. This is completely irrelevant. This is just to get us to the next skill branch. We don't need this at all. The next skill, uh, we don't use this. As you can see down in the skill bar, it is not mapped. So this uh, totally irrelevant. If I didn't have to place these here, I wouldn't. But you do to get down to here. So it is what it is. The, ne the first skill that we pick up will be Blight. Now obviously, like I said, this is a shadow damage over time, using the shadow key passive. Um, I'm dubbing my build Shadow Lord, everybody's giving their builds different names. Shadow Lord I'm giving because um, it's a unique build to me, I think. Like I said, it's a hybrid between two builds I saw. One of the builds I saw is using Bone Prison, which I'm not using. And the other build I saw was using Decrepify, which again, I'm not using. So my Paragon board's going to fit this build specifically, and so are the skills. So Blight is the first. I have two item contribution pushing it to seven, increasing its damage. Um, but you want to max this out regardless. Um, and then, yeah, any items that have plus Blight are great. The next skill obviously you have to take is slow enemies and the next one after that because we're not using minions we only use the golem in this build we don't use any minions just the golem and um, so the next skill after the slow will be if i hurry up and do it would be the blight has a 30 percent chance to immobilize enemies for 1.5 second that becomes significant in crowd control and things like that next thing is a uh, blood mist 
I don't know why I went back to that. Oh yeah, it was to show you hued flesh. Don't forget to max out hued flesh before you come down here. Next is blood mist. Again, item contributions is giving me two, so you only want to put one rank into there. One rank into the next, and one rank into leaves behind the corpse. Um, very important, because we're not using the minions. Again, item contribution to two, but corpse explosion maxed out to five. You have to take the second one, and then, yep, it becoming a darkness skill. So that means when you pop the corpse, it'll become a darkness. You want to max out the two, these two, the Grim Harvest and the Fuel by Death. Again, we have a two plus item contribution on Fuel by Death, which is increasing my damage uh, even more for consuming corpses. Very important, again. So again, ignore these. These are item contribution levels. We're not picking up any of these skills. And again, it's only one in Blood Mist. Um, it's an item contribution that's pushing that up. But again, you want max and max into these. Nothing in here. Uh, you sorry. Yep. We do take something here. The only thing we take here is Death's Embrace. So yep, close enemies take 6% more damage from you and deal 9% less damage. There is an argument to drop this and put these points elsewhere. Um, but for now, I'm leaving it there. Again, I will update this build as we go along. Um, I'm going to keep posting videos about this. So the next is the shadow passives. All of these you want. So the first is Reaper's Pursuit, maxed out. Damage enemies with darkness skill increases your movement speed by 15%. Um, yep, you definitely want that. The next is... So Reaper's Pursuit, yes. Next up is the Gloom passive. So when you damage enemies with darkness skills, they take 6% increased shield damage from you and your minions. Minions are insignificant, but it does help with the golem, because um, you will have a golem in this build. Uh, darkness skills, and then terror. Yep, darkness skill deal bonus damage to enemies that are slowed, enemies who are stunned, or immobilized. And as you saw on the blight earlier, we've taken the immobilized passive for the blight, so this helps massively for that. This passive, there is a passive uh, here, that basically gives you one below there gives you stun and if you max it out for three seconds the darkness has a lucky hit chance to give stun i do not take that and i put the skill points elsewhere and that is because the build has a lot of vulnerable in it and i'll explain that in just a second with the next skill that we pick up so that's the crippling darkness that we don't take so the next skill we pick up is corpse tendrils and again, you only want one rank in this. We're not interested in the damage. Um, I guess there's an argument for the cooldown. So again, like I said, there's points in, uh, elsewhere in that. the I can't remember the name of the skill now, but the one that... Um, was it Death's Embrace, I think? The one that does close damage and you take less damage. There's an argument to say you could maybe redistrib redistribute here to reduce the cooldown on this because it is very, very powerful. However... I haven't done that yet, I just put one rank into it. We're only using this for the stun and the vulnerable, essentially. That's what we want. So again, crowd control effects, and the vulnerable will become significant later, and I'll explain that later when I go into why I have sacrificed my minions. But for now, we're picking up corpse tendrils. Uh, enemies are slowed within 50% range, that one was. So again, that plays, I think that's a crowd control effect. And again, enemies damaged by corpse tendrils are made vulnerable for three seconds. So that's, yep, the enemies um, are slowed for 50% and the corpse tendrils for three seconds. Okay, so that's all the skill points up until this point. And then you want necrotic uh, carapace. This is um, when a corpse is formed from your skills or minions. You fortify for six percent. This is just for a little bit of, just a, a slight bit of um, survivability. To be honest, again, there is a, 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 a an argument to be made to redistribute these points elsewhere because we're not using the reapers. The only time we're really creating corpses is from blood mist um, and hued flesh. So this probably isn't going off as often as we like when you do have reapers involved and you've got the minions in so again I've, i'm looking at this maybe i've just redistributed elsewhere but again for now you can put it in if you're following along with my build I, i'm only level 64 so when i get up to the higher levels we might start min maxing in on these things but for now we take it for a little bit of survivability because we do create corpses especially when we pop blood mist 
So down here, as we have our minions sacrificed, you want to be using standalone, fully maxed out, increased damage reduction by 18%. It's reduced by 2% for each active minion, and the only active minion we will have is the golem, so we're only losing 2% on that. We take the golem mastery, obviously. Um, just gives the golem more and more, more life and survivability and more damage, because I did notice that in the capstone dungeon, the golem did start dying a lot. We don't take any of the minion passives, none at all. We don't need any of that for the golem. And the ultimate we take is bone storm. Um, so basically, this is the swirling storm of bones, appears around you um, for 10 seconds. And you also take the damage reduction on this, which is the second skill down, which I will show you in just a second. But we do not take the third skill. That is increased critical strike chance, which essentially is pretty useless for our build. Um, we are a damage over time build. Critical strike chance does not affect that. Um, we took, I already explained standalone, I don't know why I didn't go into the, is it Memento, Memento Mori? So, yep, again, you want to be maxing that out because you're sacrificing your skeletons, so it just gives you that increased percentage for sacrifice. And again, so we come to the essential uh, component of the build, which is the Shadow Blight um, key node. So, yep, Shadow Damage infects enemies with Shadow Blight for two seconds, uh, Union Minions deal increased damage, Every tenth time an enemy receives shadow damage, uh, while they are affected by shadow blight, they take additional shadow damage. So again, you've probably seen this. Again, uh, there's lots of these builds out. So these skills um, and these passes are probably not unfamiliar to you. Maybe just the way that they're laid out for this build. Like I said, there is still a little bit of tweaking. So again, that comes back to the uh, point that I made earlier about the fact how I believe this has so much potential to get even stronger in the late game and up to level 70. Um, so yeah, with that out of the way, let's get right into the um, aspects on the build and the aspects that I'm using for that. All right, so let's do that. So I will just find that right now for you. So let's start at the start. So first up, we have on our helmet, now again, Another thing I need to add um, before I uh, lay this out is the aspects. I do need to move them around on gear. I don't have them um, where I want them. And I'm using one aspect that will be getting dropped from this build for another. Um, the, essentially, the key aspect of this build, um, which will help a lot with single mobs and mobs that are spread out. Because this build really excels at mobs grouped together. It slightly struggles when mobs are spread out and too thin apart, um, but the aspect that I'm looking for will fix that. And again, another reason I'm saying that this build will potentially become even stronger up to level 70. So the first aspect we're using is the Blight's Defiled Area, when spawned, pulls in enemies around the affected area. I can't stress enough how important this aspect is. may seem quite easy to drop, Maybe seem, well, what's the point if we're using corpse tendrils? You can use that to pull in. Trust me, do not sleep on this aspect. It can be used as a stun effect on elites. You can hit an elite with this, uh, your blight, and it will stagger the elite. You can keep doing this over and over again for as much essence as you have, and it means that the elite cannot attack you. It is crucial. This has saved my ass so many times in dungeons. I have went for resistances on my helmet and a little bit of extra dexterity because this build does need dexterity for the Paragon board, which I will show later. The next one is the... Oh, we've skipped the chest, so let's just get onto that just quickly. So we've skipped the chest. I don't know how I've managed to skip the chest. Here we go. So the chest is the that plays into Bone Storm. So each time that Bone Storm damages an enemy, gain a barrier equal to three to five percent. Again, this can be min-maxed. It's not max. Um, I could get a longer, a bigger percentage in this. And all of the aspects this applies to. So again, another reason why I believe this could really pop off at level seventy. Um, I go for maximum life on armor. I'll say that now since this is the only two ones I have slots on. Again. 
nothing's maxed out i still have slots to get this build can get even stronger i have went for control impaired duration reduction on me i could re-roll that essentially strength not really important either but the darkness skill damage uh damage reduction that chest piece could easily be replaced with better rolls on it i'm just using it for the aspect at the moment the next piece of armor and um, will be the gloves now these gloves are where i want a unique to be and the unique is howl from below i think that is the one i'm i'm referring to is correct that is the aspect and unique that basically when you explode corpses summons are raised from the corpses and they home in on enemies which i think would really make this build pop but we don't i haven't found the gloves yet so i'm working without but again the build is very strong without so with that said the aspect we're using there at the moment is the blood mist leaves a trail that lasts for four seconds and deals 323 damage again could be min maxed shadow dam and that's shadow damage per and that's per second to enemies who stand in it and your movement speed is no longer reduced while using blood mist again great aspect for this build i've went for there's some dexterity on the gloves to help with the paragon board lucky hit chance is not really important could be re-rolled attack speed always good for gloves and that's where i'm getting my two ranks of blight that you saw in the skill tree so the next aspect that we will um, use on this build for now and again i think this is the aspect that will be replaced by yes it is this is the aspect that will be replaced by the unique aspect when i aspect when i get it and when i find it and that is the um but the one we're using for now is the increased armor um when you do deal any form of damage stacking up to 50 percent so it's 50 percent armor increase while um you're doing damage so it's just a great plus it has two ranks of corpse explosion on it and two ranks of blood mist so essentially this is the reason why i'm using these at the moment until i get that unique and then i will shuffle things around and take this out but for now it's just a very strong legendary piece of gear better than some of the sacreds i've found just for the ranks on the um, skills that i'm using alone so yep with that said we'll move to the boots on to the next aspect and then once we've went through these aspects, I'll show you a quick rundown of me running through the dungeon later. So the next aspect we're using is Blood Mist triggers corpse explosion on surrounding corpses. When Blood Mist detonates a corpse, its cooldown is reduced by 0.5. Again, just a great skill. We are using the perk that creates corpses when we use Blood Mist. So it's just a great starter in mobs, um, a great starter in rotation. You can just start with Blood Mist, go in, it creates a corpse, it explodes it, it creates that shadow damage, it starts doing damage to um, enemies. You can throw your golem in to slam, kill something, and you just, again, you just then the ball get the ball rolling from there. So, yep, just a, a fantastic. And the um, rolls on the boots, again, not really important. I'm just using it for the um, aspect. These rolls could easily be replaced. The most important thing I'm using it for is the two max evade charges. That is why these boots are in slot and they have been imprinted with this aspect. Very important max evade charges for this because our mobility is not great on a necromancer. If you're meaning necromancer, you know this. Mobility is not great. You need to find mobility from places. So the boots is a great place to get it with the max evade charges. Having those three evade charges is just ideal the next up is the weapon now this weapon is a fantastic weapon has great rolls um for the build that we're using just great damage all around but the aspect we're using on it and this is a crucial aspect is it turns bone storm into a darkness skill this is crucial you need this aspect on this build if you're going to play it because we are using bone storm we're using it as a darkness skill it's contributing to the dots um, and again our bone storm is very significant for other reasons for a, another aspect that i haven't showed you yet that you're about to see so i'll explain that in a little minute but yeah very important bone storm bone storm into a darkness skill and like i said the rolls on this weapon are insane this is where you want to try and get most of your damage rolls and doing most of your damage i think i am positive that the base damage of your weapon and these uh, percentages contribute to your skill um, damage so very very important 
for a good base damage as well. Again, can be improved. I'm not max level yet. I've still hit the threshold. This build is only going to get stronger. The rolls, 33% core skill damage. That makes Blight even stronger. Damage to stunned enemies. We are stunning with the Golem and we are stunning with the Corpse Tendrils. 25% damage to affected by damage over time enemies. Fantastic. And 54 to all stats. Again, just great. So, yep, all around just a fantastic weapon. Try and get your damage here. I was really, really struggling at level 61 trying to do um, content and I felt like I was doing no damage to higher level enemies. As soon as I got this weapon in slot, it made a massive difference. So the next um, aspect that we use, uh, yeah, I moved down to this one first. So the next aspect, and again, this is where Bone Storm becomes even better, even stronger. Bone Storm consumes up to eight corpses to increase its duration up to 5.6 second on mines. Again, this aspect can be min-maxed. Um, I'm using this ring for the rolls as well. Damage over time, shadow damage, critical strike chance could be re-rolled, we don't use that. And we're just looking, I like the cold uh, resistance and fire resistance. I've already got natural shadow resistance from the Paragon board, which again, I'll show you. But again, you could look for an all resistances ring would be good as well. But that bone storm, and again, the slots on the, the gems on your jewelry will be the diamonds, which will be resistance to all elements. But yes, this consumes corpses. Now, I heard a lot of complaints saying, well, if this is consuming corpses, and especially if you're not using minions, does this not then take away from your already limited corpse consumption? No, it doesn't. I do not feel the impact of this aspect at all when I'm using it. I put Bone Storm on, I still feel like there are lots and lots of corpses around, especially in big mobs. It's an, a fantastic Bone Storm last quite some time. You can outlast elites, you can outlast bosses while Bone Storm still active. And with the barrier and the time that this is up, you are basically invulnerable while Bone Storm is active. So again, very, very important, very great aspect. Just plays to this build fantastically well. The next two aspects coming up are key components to our Shadow Blight and increasing damage with our Shadow Blight key passive and Shadow Blight overall. So we will show you that in a second. So yes, the next one is each time Shadow Blight key passive deals damage to enemies, it increases the next Shadow Blight's damage within 10 seconds by 40%, stacking up to five times. That is fantastic. Again, this aspect can be min-maxed. It's not max level. The uh, ring can be min maxed, it's, it, it will be replaced eventually, this is why it's not, uh, all this gear has not been maxed out. The weapon, you do, you do upgrade that to full level always, so keep that in mind, I forgot to mention that. You do uh, max out your weapon, because again, it, it's the most important part of any build at any time. But the ring, again, as you can see, the rolls are fantastic on this, and the, um, the skeletal mages inherit not important, we don't use Skeletal Mages, so that could be re-rolled. Uh, we're really using this for the damage to slowed. Max S, this ring is about to be replaced very, very soon, but the, it's being used for the aspect alone again. And then the final aspect, the final part of this build that we are looking for. Um, if I, This is a recorded video, do apologise, I will improve these videos in time. So the last part is the imprinted, you deal 117% increased damage for 6 seconds after the Shadow Blight key passive damages enemies 10 times. So the Shadow key pipe, uh, passive is going off all the time through all the different things I've just showed you. Um, blight is causing it, Corpse Explosion, uh, all the different aspects it's coming from and then this just increases the damage every time it goes off. So it ticks up to 10, it does it, does it 10 times, this increases your damage. Everything just steamrolls. Like I said, you've probably had these builds explained a lot of times. It's no different from all the other builds. It's maybe just the way I lay out my skills, the way I do my rotation that's different. It's probably what you're interested in. So that's what we will get into next. Just quickly, I'll go over the rolls on the um, necklace you're maybe looking for. Because again, a lot of people don't go over the actual stats on the gear. They're only showing you the aspects. So I like to make a little mention to the rolls and why I picked these items and put it imprinted onto these. So again, it's for the um, resistance to all, which is great. Damage reduction from enemies affected by shadow over time. Again, that's what we do. Damage reduction from close enemies. 
we, you could re-roll that, but it, it does work for us. We are close to enemies quite a lot. There's where we're getting our fuel by death, extra ranks. And movement speed after uh, killing elite, not really important. Again, this will be replaced, can be min-maxed. So as you see, that's all the key aspects that you need, the skills that you need in place. And one final mention we'll just go over is the minion sacrifices that you will have to uh, give up, essentially. So the first up, I don't... Yep, so the next one will be the... So let's just take a look at that quickly. So here we have our sacrifices. So first up, we have um, the Shadow Mages sacrificed for 15% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Now bear in mind, we're getting a 60% increase to this through Memento Moir. You could even put the sacrifice aspect in. However, I'm not going to do that because it takes away from too many of crucial aspects that I'm already using. I'm quite happy with the increase I've got. But our Golem does vulnerable and our Corpse Tendril does vulnerable. So if you rotate Corpse Tendril and Golem smartly, you can have vulnerable up almost all the time. So this is sig very significant and it's doing extra damage all the time. You just need to keep that vulnerable up, which you could, you ha we have two separate skills to be able to do that. So this is fantastic. It just contributes to extra damage to the build. Next up is the... Oh. No. Right, let's just quickly have a look at this. Let me just let it play for a second. I do apologise, these, these videos will get better. I will do editing. I'm just trying to get through it. This is the first video I've done in five years, so please, please, please do bear with me. So, yep, next up we have the Reapers. So, the Reapers are sacrificed for extra shadow damage. So, again, a no-brainer. So, let me just quickly go into this because this is a bone of contention with some people. This is a lot of people fear taking these reapers out they feel like as soon as they take these reapers out and they lose the bonus of them generating corpses that they lose all consistency with corpse generation i felt exactly the same i tried this build without reapers essentially earlier in uh, my level and i went back to using the minions for a while because i didn't feel it was working i committed to it again i gave it another try i changed this i have changed the skills to what i have now i hybrid two builds that I watched, I uh, mashed them together, I made a hybrid of my own, I went back to removing the Reapers and I do not feel I have this problem anymore. Yes, there is issues with um, encounters, with staggered out enemies and not big mobs, but again, I feel like the unique Howl from Below will take care of that. All you need to deal with is just killing at least one or two enemies to begin with to get the ball rolling for that. So this is in my opinion, a good idea to take these Reapers out. Although it does take some getting used to, you do have to kind of get used to rotations and killing, but the Blight that we use does so much damage with the extra ranks from it that it, we can kill without the Reapers or the Minions, we can get the ball rolling ourselves, so we do take the Reapers out for that reason. Then we had the Skeletal Mages, obviously, which you saw. And then finally... The last one will be the Golem that should pop up in a second. But the Golem's pretty self-explanatory. If you haven't figured it out yourself already, if you've been following along to this point, then you know what was coming up. Yes, Iron Golem with slam attack and also makes them vulnerable. Again, no brainer, it's just extra vulnerable time. I've already mentioned it a few times about with the Corpse Tendril, the Mages doing the extra vulnerable damage, so you knew it was coming. It just it is what it is. It's crucial. I don't I can't really understand why people would take it out for a curse because it's extra vulnerable damage for your mage um, and then people don't have it in, they have like uh, corpse tendrils in but not golem or they'll have golem and decrepify. Um, the other build I saw was using bone prison instead of that which I mentioned earlier but again I just feel like the tendrils and the golem they both synergize with this build that I'm creating just so well, um, especially with the shadow passives that we took with the skills. So again, it's just a crucial component and I love it and I am not removing it. And it's at least you still get one minion, at least one minion to feel like, you know, you're still somewhat of a minion build um, to some degree. So yeah, so this is the, the Paragon board that we're using, but I won't go into that just yet. Um, we'll come back to that. 
So what we'll do is we will go through a quick um, rundown of me just running through. So this is the capstone dungeon that I'm doing at level 64 to go to world tier 4. Um, I start from the beginning, as you can see. Um, we start running through. I will just start skip. I'll skip the video um, because we've already wasted so much time going through the rundown of the build and stuff. So I won't watch the entire run. But I will just skip part. Uh, so as you can see, here's the first encounter. Only three enemies. So this is a great example of the Reapers being out and creating corpses yourself. And a quick explanation of the rotation of my skills and the build. So let's just um, get to it. No. Nope. So as we come around here, as you see, I'm just checking the map there quickly. We have to grab the... Oh no, it's just enter. I thought I was doing some sort of side objective there, but no, it's just uh, doing the dot. So we're just coming into the coming into the dungeon here. We're just starting, and again, I didn't die once in this build. And bear in mind, just quickly, I'll mention I've killed the butcher at level sixty nine with this build as well, without dying with relative ease. He died quite quickly. It wasn't a problem at all. So let's just skip forward a bit. Um, in fact, no. So we'll do the first encounter and then we'll start skipping in because I want it, I want to show the rotation. So here we go. We're going to come into a rotation. So here we go. First one. So first up. My apologies. I have just made an absolute fool of myself. I pressed the button by accident. I do apologize. I might edit this. I might not. If it's not edited. What can I do? I will start editing videos, I will start improving the quality, I promise the quality will improve, they will be edited. So here we go, yes, pause it quickly. So as you saw there, Blight first. Sometimes if we, enemies are weak enough, they will die from the Blight originally, so you can get the ball rolling with corpses. But if this doesn't work, as you saw, I sent the Golem in for a slam. Again, if no one dies in that instant, so you've got no corpses, as you saw, I was trying to explode corpses. There was no corpses to explode. I realized this. I moved. I put Blight in again. Blight stacks. Okay, so the Blight that you put on, it does stack the more you put on. So again, Blight, Golem. If no one... Try and explode the corpse. If you see that it's not working instantly, you have to uh, know. Move. Do it again. As you see, I have a corpse down. Now, the rotation is usually hit corpse tendrils at this time. If there's a big group to get the CC and vulnerable going for the next group. These ones are quite far away. I probably shouldn't have done that. But it's not a problem because, as you see, we can put Blight in again. I used Blood Mist again. You can use that as another engager, uh, which I had to there at that point. But at this point, you've got corpses up, your ball's rolling, there's corpses everywhere. And this is where I feel like the unique would make it stronger. Because even if the corpses were further away, you could start blowing up these corpses down here and they will home in on the enemies up here. So again, this build can only get stronger. Just another showcase of why that's the case. Here's um, a damage resistance enemies. Again, I've seen people struggling to kill these. We can take them down really fast with Bone Storm. Perfect, actually. That is perfect. So there's a full rotation of skills, including the ultimate. So that's the first rotation of skills. Blight. Send the golem in. If it doesn't kill anything, blight again till something dies. Corpse tendrils, if there's still enemies around there. And then you've got you've still got blood mist and bone storm at your disposal. I try and keep bone storm. Hold it back for big massive mobs or elites i don't tend to just pop it into every single pack i do with this build there is no requirement to consistently keep popping your bone storm you do not have to do it you have enough survivability through the uh, corpse carapace or whatever it's called and also the golem stunning and the tendrils stunning all the time that you can get out of danger and you can use your potions and it's not a problem as you will see in this video which I do several times. So again we used blight, the golem comes in to slam if it's available, we popped a uh, bone storm there and when bone storm is on you are invulnerable as you can see in the bottom left the shield effect comes into play and I have never ever ever fought any enemy including the butcher including the boss in this uh, area that has ever 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 breached that barrier I think I've seen it one time and when it did it, it still it only breached by a, a very very small significant amount and took a tiny 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 amount of health off me I have yet to see anyone breach that barrier 
any enemies. So again, I'll just let the video play for a bit to let you run through my skills and let you see my rotations again. It's very self-explanatory. You'll see me using Corp Tendrils sometimes when no one's there. This is just because I'm um, focused and I'm just into a, rota a rotation of the build. Uh, I used to, a little background about myself then uh, while we're here, uh, just while we're going through the video and you can watch some of the gameplay uh, going ahead once um, we'll find some elites. Um, I've played PoE for years and years and years, so I'm just in that mindset of, there you see, there you see the corpse tendrils, amazing pulling everyone in, it's vulnerable, again, the only issue with this, um, elites were there, so we pop bone storm so we can deal with them, again, vulnerable from the corpse tendrils, and blight is being thrown out periodically every now and again. I will try and find an area where we use, I'll try and use a portion of this video where we use Blight as a CC to stun um, an elite or an enemy, so we will look for a portion there because I did it again, I explained that in the build with Blight, so all these aspects are coming into play, your Blood Mist is, uh, again, I use Blood Mist as an engager there rather than the Blight, Golem, Blight uh, combination, I use Blood Mist instead as the engager. Um, enemy pulled in by the corpse tendrils, and I don't know why I'm not exploding corpses there. Again, it was this was very late. If you look at the time on the top right, it's almost four o'clock in the morning, so I'm very tired when I'm doing this run. Um, I just wanted to get it in. I wanted to do it last night so that I could make this video today for you guys, so you can see me run this dungeon. This I very do apologize, it's a very long video as well, but you know what, I will just leave it for continuity and just in case anybody does want to go along with the build. So let's just skip forward a bit. Let's see if we can find an area where we are using the Blight as a CC. Here we go, I think, yeah, there, as you can see, that is the Blight that is dragging the, let's put it back to the start, so... We have an engagement here. Again, single target is a bit of a problem when they're away from the corpses, but the unique would the unique would deal with this. If we had the unique howl from below, we could be popping corpses over here. They would be rushing over to these enemies and creating pulls. So, like I said, we're, we're struggling a little bit with the build on single target, but again, that is not going to be an issue when we find these gloves. If you already have those gloves um, and these aspects, you could spec into this build now if you wanted to. Just bear in mind, everything does need to be improved. But this build would stand at level 70. I don't know about level 80 and stuff yet, but again, we're go I'm going to take that journey. I hope you will take it with me. But as we see, let me show you us using a Blight as a CC. So there we go. We vulnerable them in. We make sure the shadow damage is always up with corpses. So here we go. And um, there we go. He's pulled across to me. He's pulled across to me again. And he's pulled to me again. And he's not damaging while he's doing that. Again, he's stunned from the tendrils. We pulled him again so to CC. He had vulnerable that whole time, we're moving around, and he's dead. So it's just like that, and you can use the Blight as a CC. Like I said, when you cast that Blight and it hits the enemy, they will. you will see, it is very, very noticeable. You will see them significantly move towards you. They will get pulled towards you in quite a jerking motion. You know that it's worked if that's happened. Some elites are not affected. There, we just used it again as a pull in towards the, sh uh, the shadow damage. Some elites are not affected by this. Some are. When you see it happen, you know you can use it. Just bear it in mind as you move forward. So let's just skip forward a bit to the objectives. Here is an objective-based um, part of the map that's about to happen with lots of enemies coming out. So again, this is a part of the build where I will give you the the, uh, the bare truth of the build as it stands at the moment without the unique, is that it does struggle slightly when enemies are scattered out. Like this is exactly what I'm talking about with the scattered out enemies. We kind of need them to come into us and rush us, but again, the unique will take care of that for us. So I'm not worried about that. This build is only going to get stronger. I am at 100% certain of that. Very, very confident. So again, we pop Bone Storm for this encounter. As the Elite has come out, we're popping corpses all the time. Um, we could be using Corpse Tendril here, which we'd not. So again, it's quite late. I'm forgetting to use Corpse Tendrils when it's up, things like that. So again, this build can be stronger if you are on the ball and you are sharp with it. All right. So let's just skip forward a bit. And again, we did not die once. I get 
I'm just uh, stopping at encounters with elites and encounters with, as you can see, the shield is on when Bone Storm's on, you are invulnerable, you cannot take damage. You do not take damage when you have Bone Storm active. I've yet to see it happen. Again, Blight is, is pulling everyone in. Instead of, I'm not using Corpse Tendrils there, which I could have as well for an extra stun, but Blight was doing the job just the, uh, just as good as Corpse Tendrils there, so I did not need to use them, so I keep it for another encounter or to pull enemies away from me when I'm trying to run away. Uh, very situational. Again, here's some Elites. We used Blood Mist to engage this time, just to get the ball rolling. Lots of enemies come in. Again, we have those uh, plus three to max evade, so we have very good mobility in, in fights like this as well. Again, your health, you will take hits to your health. Again, you just need to be on top of it, as we see. There is times where you will be tested. You do need to pay attention. And again, Bone Storm just melts everything, and we are on our way. And you, again, the great thing about Bone Storm as well, another little niche thing about Bone Storm that's just amazing about having it, is that while it's active, how many times have I died to enemies exploding on the floor because I can't see them because I'm using the shadow uh, damage and as you can see it covers the ground you don't see the enemies explode it's too late and you die with bone storm active this does not happen you never die to the exploding corpses while bone storm is active so it's just a, a little caveat of the build that's really nice as well you don't have to worry about it so yep We've seen a lot of encounters, a lot of big mobs, we're always using Bone Storm, we're always popping corpses. As you can see, it's very, very powerful. These are all level 70 enemies, as I'm only level 64. Again, I know level 64 is probably a little bit higher than, or not as impressive as people have done it. But, as I say, um, I feel like this build is strong and it's only going to get stronger. So, yep. Yeah. Let's skip forward to the... Let's skip forward to some other encounters. Again... We're just, we're just running through the through the dungeon with relative ease. Um, there's no real, uh, it's not massively difficult. We aren't struggling. We're not fighting with the dungeon. We're not dying over and over and over again. We're just, it's just like any other dungeon that we do. We're just getting through it nice and easy. And here we go. Some more elites. They're pulled in. And there, the blight is being used as a CC again on these uh, particular enemies. And the golem finished off the job for us to make them uh, vulnerable, and we finished them off, so that's great. So, we've seen a lot of trash mobs, I think you get the general idea of how it works, the rotation, very powerful, very strong, um, lots of ways to group enemies up, you can use tendrils, you can use the blight, um, very situational, lots of tools at your disposal, so let's just move straight to the boss encounter then, um, based on, and have a look at how it fares against the boss. So let's just find that. So here we go, we're about to take on the boss. Now one thing I will explain while we're waiting, because this is what we did, is you are best to wait for your bone storm to become active um, before you go into any boss encounter. If I'm being honest, it's not necessary because you could engage with uh, Blood Mist. So if you do, for example, get uh, jumped by the Butcher or he comes unexpectedly or you uh, face a boss unexpectedly, it's not a massive issue. But I just like to do it for efficiency and just being quicker, um, essentially, with the build. I wait until Bone Storm's active. Again, we do the same rotation, Blight, um, Golem. We need to do Blood Mist to get corpses in because we're waiting for Hued Flesh. Bone Storm comes on to do the majority of our damage because again, the corpse generation is not huge um, with bosses, but it is there. You are getting a twenty-four percent increased damage from huge flesh. Luckily, minions spawn in on this fight, so I guess it's not a problem anyway. Corpse tendrils for the vulnerable. We're using the golem to vulnerable. I'm not sure if this boss is being stunned by these things um, or not. I didn't really pay attention to that. I guess we'll see in a minute. I don't think he is. The other uh, minions are being stunned. Again, we just keep, you want to keep the shadow, um, keep pop my corpse as soon as it's available to keep the shadow damage stacking. Blood mist as soon as it's available. You could also use blood mist as a, a get out of jail free card. It can be used as a, a, it can be used when you're stunned or frozen, anything like that. So it can be used as a get out of any sort of CC that you're in. Again, we're just moving round, we're firing, corpse, and it, the, it is what it is. Boss health, down very fast, and there you go. Capstone Dungeon, we're world tier 4 at level 64, with a Necromancer using Gollum, um, and my Shadow Lord build. 
um, which is a hybrid between two builds that I've created. So yeah, with that said and done, let's have a quick look at the Paragon board. I don't know if I went over the Paragon board. You'll probably see here I, I pointed at my hands and I, I shook my head if you're paying attention to the top left. This is me live streaming at 4 o'clock in the morning in my living room. Again, this stream will be improved. Everything's being improved at the moment. The channel is just starting up again from a five-year hiatus, so please bear with me. Um, but yeah, Basically, that was it, and I'm pointing at the hands because I'm looking for the glove. That was a unique. I have about six. I have every single Necromancer unique at this point, except for the gloves. The uh, the only unique I haven't found. I have done lots of hell tides looking for the gloves and targeting the gloves specifically. I've been taking caches from the Tree of Whispers and targeting gloves specifically, but I am not getting the gloves. So I just keep looking. We keep trying, and as you can see, this is me increasing the difficulty in my game to world tier 4 with this build. So that is it. So yeah, let's have a quick look at the Paragon board if you're interested and you're still here after all this time. Um, I do appreciate you checking my build out. So let's have a quick look. So yeah, I'm not going to go through every single node here um, for consistency sake and the fact that the, the video has went on for quite some time already, which I do apologise about. I will at some point make a more bite sized version of this build. I will also put the build into a planner so you can get a clerical form of that for yourself if you want to follow it or look. But for now, let's just take a look. So yes, we take, um, you come up to the right first and you take the damage nodes there. You're getting 20% extra damage and 4% maximum life with the prime node here as long as you meet the requirements for willpower, which you will later in the game. Anyway, not a problem. Again, you take all these blue nodes, you can look for yourself to see what you do, I've hovered over them quickly, but you always take the blue nodes, you come up here, again, willpower is boosted from here, from the node, but I will explain that once we get to it. Again, you want to come down here, get the blue nodes here, just for a little bit extra more resistances and life, and again, yep, life and resistances, very self-explanatory. This is where dexterity comes in. Again, my dexterity is okay for now. So again, so the first glyph we want to take here is Scourge. We put this in here. I may replace this glyph with something else in here, but for now, because I have no other glyph slots and Scourge I know is going to be a definite in this build and in this Paragon board, I put this here for now. I'm getting 13.5% shadow damage over time just now because I've leveled it up a few times already. Um, and for every 5 willpower, it does increase shadow damage and the bonus, I don't have yet, but once the range increases, I will get the bonus for that. But the bonus, it'll be an extra 10% for me and my golem once it activates. So again, once you put that in and you've done that, you can run nightmare dungeons to level this. This is how you how you level it. The higher tier uh, nightmare dungeons, the higher the level. Again, blue nodes over here, you want to take them. Any willpower is boosting your... Shadow damage, and there is flat damage there as well. And you want to take the yellow nodes always for the extra bonuses and make sure you're hitting those bonuses as well. So we come up the left-hand side here. Plenty of places to pick up extra dexterity as well um, all around. That's extra armor and this is extra damage, um, just in case you were curious to what those were. And then you want to take the blue nodes as well. Like I said, always 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 take these blue nodes going up i was going to mention something there but i've completely forgotten so we'll move on we'll just keep going so yep we come up and then we unlock the board and then the next board we take is the weather board now i think when you unlock that you want to rotate it once but i think the rotation you want to have the weather down on the bottom left hand corner again a lot of people using Shadow damage, shadow damage over time builds, dot builds with Necro, they are using this weather board and they're all using it, rotating it the same way. No one is varying this part of the build. The only varying is maybe the path they take in the um, Paragon board, but the rotation stays the same. Weather, bottom, left corner. Then you come up here, you take the intelligence nodes to get up into your first set of blue nodes again. This is just damage reduction. Damage reduction for memory sh shadow damage over time. So you take these blues. This is the first time you will pass some blues, in my opinion, that we don't want. Um, this is the uh, damage reduction from enemies that are affected by shadow damage over time. 12% shadow resistance. There is a blue node up there, you can see, above this one, that we are not taking. We do not take this node. We're not interested in that node. 
we just move straight over to um, there. I think it's shadow resistance, so we're not bothered. So again, yep, we want to come up and we go this way to take the willpower and intelligence to increase the shadow damage and then you take wither. This is a no-brainer. Shadow damage over time effects have a 5% chance to deal 50% bonus damage each time they deal damage. This chance is increased by 1% and bonus damage is increased by 2.5% for each 50 willpower you have. So exponentially getting stronger as you get stronger with this uh, key node, legendary node. So yep, this is why you took this board in the first place. So in my opinion, this is where my build kind of varies and hybrids and uh, veers off from other builds. So you come up here to up here and you want to take... Well, you have to take potion healing, and um, you don't have a choice. And again, that you want there's some blue nodes you will miss out in here. You only take the potion healing and maximum life here. We're really only taking this for the maximum life. Potion healing is a bonus, but not crucial in my opinion. And then the maximum life um, over here. These are potion healing. You can take them if you want, but I'm saving them for later on, and so I can get into the Paragorn quick uh, oven boards quicker. Maximum life here. Um. And again, this is where I've got to right now. So I haven't got any further. The next board I will take, I know um, if you're interested, um, will be. So I do explain where I'm going on this board and what board I will take next. So I will go into that right now if you're interested and you're further than me and you're following this build and you maybe want to try it out. So basically you come along here and you'll take these nodes and then you'll get this key node here, which will be the 10% shadow damage over time and plus 10% shadow damage. That is going to be huge. And then once you get the intelligence requirement, you'll get another 10% shadow damage over time. So this is going to be huge. This is really going to skyrocket your damage a bit, give you a significant boost to your damage. So this is going to be really, really good once we get that in place. And then I think you will take all the blue nodes around this one because I think they will be... Um, I'm not they will be played into damage. I think they will contribute to damage as well. I'll check just now. Yep, 5% shadow damage, 5% shadow damage. So you want to take all those uh, blue nodes around that one as well. Then we'll come along here and we will move up. We will take the willpower, intelligence nodes. We will move right to the corner here to take this willpower, one up take the blue nodes and then we'll take the extra percent uh, shadow damage and 10 intelligence. So that's what you'll take there. And the path you'll take is, as, a, as I've explained, I just show you how you go there. Yes, that's correct. And then you'll go up, keep following my cursor. Yep, and then you'll take this, the glyph socket. And then I think I do give an explanation as to what glyph we're going to put in there. The glyph you want to put in there will be Abyssal. So this glyph will give you... 15% uh, bonus uh, to non-physical damage and damage reduction modifiers within range. You and your minions deal 10% increased non-physical damage if you meet the requirements. Um, we're just taking this to boost the nodes in, the, 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 in this range as there are shadow damage nodes and there are resistance nodes here as well for shadow damage. Not massive, not really why we're in here, it's just for the damage. But, you know, it's good if you get those Nightmare Dungeons, high tier Nightmare Dungeons with the affixes where you, and just follow my cursor here for the paths. Again, so there you go, you get the resistance. So the node boosts the resistances as well. Again, not crucial, but if you get those high tier Nightmare Dungeon sigils and maybe they're doing bonus shadow damage, Fantastic. They are the dungeons you can go in and you can blast with ease because your shadows or resistance will be amazing. And as I said, you will come along there and you will unlock this board once you've done all of that up there. And we will take the Flesh Eater board next. That is the board that can, um, I think if you consume up to a set amount of corpses, you do increase damage. I'm not sure on the rotation yet. So bear with me, it will be coming soon, but this takes you up to this point and through this board, um, through the initial board and through the first Paragon board. I will be back with an updated build. I'm going to be updating this build every single week. I stream. So with that said, that is my Shadow Lord build, which I'm very proud of. I'm very happy with. I'm having a ton of fun with. I think, in my opinion, it is the most fun Necromancer I have played to date on this and I have tried a lot of builds, I've tried Blood, 
I've tried Vampire, I've tried Darkness with Minions, I've tried Minion alone, self Minion. I know a lot of people are crying out for a Minion build, but guys, I think we all as Necromains need to come to the realisation that minion are, Minions are broken. They do not work um, at this moment in time. They need buffed more, we need more. Um, they just don't work at high levels. Even the Golem... Now, one last note for the build that I'm going to add here, um, which I never thought I would ever add, but I am considering removing the Golem um, and putting the Golem Mastery points into the Shadow Damage passive, which we don't have at the moment, which will give us a lucky hit increased chance to stun enemies naturally. Um, the reason for this is because when I was in that capstone dungeon and something I don't know was very highlighted very well because I had to skip, again due to the length of the uh, video, was that the golem died quite often in that capstone dungeon. More than I've seen the golem die in any other... Um, any other scenario. But for that reason as well, I am also considering taking the golem board at some point. Not next, I still will take the Flesh Eater board next to get the extra damage for Corpse and because with the Golem dying as much, I don't feel it's as it uh, impactful because the reason for that is the Golem resummons itself. So even if it does die and you are concentrating and you are in the thick of it, the Golem will come back eventually and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to consider, well I have to hit a skill, I have to find a Corpse, none of that, he'll just come back in time. So although it is a pain, and you might want him in some scenarios to stun enemies and use him for control, you still have corpse tendrils for that, you still have corpse tendrils for the stun, and you still have corpse tendrils for vulnerable. So corpse tendrils still does the job of the golem, so again, last note, I'm considering it, I'm not going to do it at the moment, it stays in for now, I will be back with another update. Um, but that's the build, Shadow Lord. Um, if you've made it this far through the video and watched, Thank you so much. I tried to cover as much as possible, um, to cover as many questions as people might have, but I'm more than welcome to accept any and all questions in the chat. I'm more than welcome uh, for some positive criticism. I will accept. Please be nice. Um, if there's something you've seen that you don't agree with or you think could be improved, constructive criticism. Okay, keep it polite, keep it nice, that's all we're after, we're all looking, we're all after the same thing here guys, we all want a powerful necromancer, we all want to be running through dungeons as fast as possible, getting that good gear and getting ourselves up to that end game. The goal for me is to get to level 100, do the Echo of Lilith and then start a new class essentially. I want to start a new class but I don't want to abandon the necromancer until I've finished all my goals with it, I've done nothing but necromancer, I name main necromancer. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing from now on. So yeah, just um, with that said, um, just an outro, my outro, um, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy the build. I hope you have as much fun with it as I'm having. Again, like I said, I think this has the potential to get even, even stronger in the future. Like exponentially stronger, we're not even level 70 yet, we're still to see ancestral items to be added on top of this to give us even more bonuses for the rolls. This build is going to pop off, watch this space, I really believe that I can make this into something amazing. Um, I'm very confident with it, I feel good and it is what it is, I'll be doing videos every week. Either about this build or tips videos, I've got a video, the next video coming next will be about how to efficiently farm the Helltide uh, and not waste your time with it. Um, because I've found out some things from playing consistently since uh, early access, um, how to kind of do it and, and what suits me when I'm looking for items, so I'll, I'll come out with that next. I stream on Twitch, that's Smoking Hads at twitch.com, same as the YouTube channel, link will be in the description for that as well. So if you want to head over to the channel, I stream most time, most nights, UK time, and sporadically at the weekend I will be on streaming, probably I'll be on today, after I do this video, which makes no difference to anybody because it won't be uploaded, uploaded on the same day, so that doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, that's everything then. So basically, I'm streaming on Twitch. You can see it live. If you want to come see it live in action, feel free to do so. And one final thing is that if you enjoyed the video and you do want to see future content, you want to see where the build's going, you want the updates, um, 
or you're just you're not playing this but you're maybe just interested in seeing how it goes then please um, subscribe to the channel um, so that I can grow it that's all I'm looking to do I am just doing this as a hobby for now but like I said depending on the interest and how it goes we may um, start doing more because again as I said I do work full time so it is hard to make these videos and have the consistent quality and I feel like the quality is probably not right there right now but it will be in time so thanks for watching I hope you come back to see progress on this we'll be back with an update on the build once we've leveled up some more we've got some gear hopefully we can find those gloves to really showcase it popping off because I know for a fact it's really going to do that um, and in the meantime there may be a link in the description for a clerical version of this build yet I don't know we'll need to wait and see I'll need to make it if there is go check it out if not it's coming soon and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time goodbye